Somatostatin analogs uh, currently are used for two different purposes for our patients. One is to control the hormones that are produced by their tumor uh, that are causing them troubles, whether it's serotonin, the carcinoid syndrome, or a myriad of other hormones that can be produced by neuroendocrine tumors. The second reason to treat patients with somatostatin analogs is uh, to try and slow or stop the progression, the slow growth of their disease. And this has been demonstrated in two randomized trials, one for octreotide and one for lanreotide in slightly different populations, and actually has been known for 30 or 40 years, just not demonstrated in clinical trials until recently. Uh, actual reduction in tumor bulk or tumor volume is quite rare, it's perhaps one or two percent of patients who have their tumors shrink. But in a patient where the tumor is slowly growing, uh, stability and, and halting that growth for a period of time is one of the goals of somatostatin analog therapy. There are two uh, commercially available um, somatostatin analogs in gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Octreotide, brand name is sandostatin, and lanreotide, brand name is somatulene. Uh, sandostatin is an intramuscular injection, uh, typically administered as a dose of 30 milligrams every four weeks. That's sort of a standard uh, dose of the drug. Somatulene, lanreotide is a deep subcutaneous injection. Uh, the standard dose is 120 milligrams every four weeks. They're both very similar drugs. They target the somatostatin receptor. They most avidly target somatostatin receptor subtype 2, so the pharmacodynamic profile is extremely similar. And the clinical data is quite similar as far as both control of hormonal symptoms, there have been studies showing that they're fairly interchangeable, as well as control of tumor growth. Each of them has had a phase three study showing uh, inhibition of tumor growth, the PROMID study for sandostatin and the clarinet study for somatulene. And in fact, if you look at the hazard ratio for midgut neuroendocrine tumors uh, in both studies, uh, it was quite similar. So we think the drugs work very similarly and probably not a big difference in efficacy uh, between the two drugs. The FDA labeling is slightly different. Uh, sandostatin uh, is only formally indicated for symptom control, control of the carcinoid syndrome, uh, despite the fact that the PROMIT study also showed tumor control. So Somatulene um, has an indication for tumor control in enteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors for inhibition of tumor growth, and also recently uh, received an approval uh, for control of carcinoid syndrome. So its formal indication is, is broader than that of sandostatin. Somatostatin analogs have been um, around for a very long time. Initially, um, the first, one of the first papers that was published by Dr. Coves was about um, the use of octreotide short-acting the control of uh, carcinoid uh, syndrome. Um, that has proved that they will improve um, flushing, diarrhea, and even decrease um, urine 5 hi 8 which is a biomarker for carcinoid syndrome, if I may put it in that way. Uh, then later, there was a the develop of the long-acting octreotide, um, and that actually, there was a um, large trial that was done um, comparing to placebo that showed that patients that receive octreotide um, long-acting at 30 milligrams um, intramuscular every four weeks had an uh, improvement in um, tumor control and also improvement of um, symptoms. Most recently, lanreotide, which is done, um, uh, is provided by a different company, um, also show in the clarinet study that you can have um, an improvement in progression for survival versus placebo. So now we have two long-acting medications from different companies that can help both to delay tumor progression or progression for survival, but also to control symptoms of carcinoid syndrome in the patients that have that.